And they really want to hear about public speaking, right? <laughs> so what do you do? Here's what you do. You love this. You're going to love this. Try this. I guarantee it will change your ability to speak in public. Oh, yeah. So I said, well, I'm going to talk about public speaking. They could care less, right? I'm going to talk about public speaking. But before I start, I'm going to do something different today. I'm going to have one of you come up here and speak for three minutes. And I'll give you the topic. I'm going to sit down, and we're going to critique you. You know, find out what you did wrong, if you get nervous, your ahs and ums, and that kind of thing. Do I have any volunteers? <laughs> what do you think the answer was? No. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'll just pick someone. And I started walking into the crowd like this. <laughs> oh, yeah. No one would look at me. <laughs> They all had a great interest in their shoes, <laughs> in their neighbor. I'd go and touch them on the shoulder. They wouldn't look up. Absolutely not. Like I was going to throw them in the river. They're holding on to the pole so hard they'd never get And I just worked the table back and forth, scaring the whatever out of people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I remember, you know, one day they had an accident. Oh, it was horrible. And finally, I go up to this one lady and I. I touch her and she, no, I'm not, not going to look. I said, okay. And I turned and I started to walk away. And I kind of got this, oh. <laughs> so I decided, well, maybe I will. And I turned around and looked. And the, her face just drained all the color out of it. She was petrified. And I just worked the crowd. Now, I wasn't playing to pick anyone. I just wanted to get that feeling in their stomach, you know, that terror stomach. So I said, okay, we're not going to do that. Is that okay with you? <laughs> Hear a pin drop. No one was going to be the first person to speak. I said, No, okay, we're not going to do this. Is that all right? No. Finally, I said, Okay, did anyone feel like if they didn't look at me, I wouldn't see them? And they all started to laugh and laugh and they loosened up and said, Okay, now you know that feeling you have in your stomach right now? Toastmasters handles that. And that's how we introduce Toastmasters. But the point I want you to take away from this is this. As a speaker, when you're brand new, you get up in front of the audience. What do you know? The audience affects you. Yeah. You're scared to death. Oh my God, they're looking at me. Did I comb my hair? Oh my God, I hope I don't forget my eye. You're just nervous. You're inside your head. You, you, can't, you can't see this far out. You're just petrified, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when you get to the point as a speaker, you realize you create the effect on the audience. If you've ever seen a great speaker or world championship speakers, they make you cry, they make you laugh, you can scare the death out of them, you control the audience. You don't realize it, you need to realize that. And if you have to do something like that to realize it, do it. Because, trust me, you go do a kickoff meeting, everyone in that room, including the leaders, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the different people running the organization, they're just as nervous. You control the audience. Does that make sense? Okay, good. So, the close. So, basically I say, those who can turn in their paperwork now. And then, there's a big question, what do we do? So here's what I say. And you know, maybe we shouldn't film this, but... <laughs> I say, okay. I know there's a hundred of you, and you, you probably can't all be charter members, but just let me... And I look over my shoulder as if T.I. was watching me, and then I lean forward, and I go, okay. Today only. <laughs> Anyone who turns in their paperwork, I'll make sure they're a charter member. But if you leave without turning in the paperwork, I'm sorry. If you join next week, that'd be fine. But if you want to be a charter member, trust me. You've, you've created value for these people. Now you've made scarcity, right? Scarcity. And this is their chance, and they don't even have that money. They just have to fill up. If they can remember their name and address, they're all set. <laughs> it works every time. It's fantastic. Because you are helping them. You're changing their lives. Make sense? How are we doing on time? Do we have, uh... we have 10 minutes? 10 minutes? Fantastic. Okay. Let me see. I've got so many things to share with you. Uh, does anyone have any questions so far? Yes. Very good question. 
Usually we get maybe half the money then. But there's always someone in the company or corporation who's running this whole show, knows everybody. He sent out the flyers, he's got that and so forth. And I just basically say, you know, Joe will be around to your, in the next couple of days. Go see Joe and turn the money in. Because he's the one starting the club. I usually make him the president. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And there, you close him now. You don't say, well, take the application home and think about it. Yeah. Right? No. How many times have you seen that? Or, oh, I forgot to bring applications, but next meeting will. No. People aren't going to come up for a second meeting. You close them now. Does that make sense? Good. Next question. Yes? Sponsors and mentors. I can build a club in the blink of an eye, but the sponsors and mentors is where I get a brick wall every time. Really? Okay. Good. People are getting tired. Tired. Okay. Well, if they're getting tired, they're having failed. I'm sorry. The question was. Uh, starting the club is easy, but finding mentors and sponsors is difficult, everyone's tired, and so forth. Okay, first of all, why do people get tired? Why do people get tired? Can't hear you. Same old, same old, so forth? Okay, here's the reason people get tired. They have a failed purpose. They've tried to do something, they've failed at it. If you want to wake someone up and bring them back to life, you just rekindle the failed purpose. That's all I have to do. Now, what I would do, and this is what we do, is we have the sponsors, which will probably be the person there, and maybe the area governor. I try to get every single area to start a club and make sure the area governor is one of the sponsors so he can be a presence distinguished as well as his DTM. And the mentors, we find in maybe a, a, a local club that's going to be helping out. And we want to have the two mentors and the sponsors there at the meeting along with the area governor if it's not the sponsor, and the division government. We want them there to feel the pulse and get to know people and turn it right over, and we set the meeting for the very next week. So if we're meeting Friday at noon, that's probably when everyone can show up, so the next Friday at noon. And we don't say we'd like to start a club. We're starting a club. We'd love to have you join us. And the meeting start on so-and-so. Got it? So it's already agreed upon. that help? Good. Question? I, your plan is just so different, and I've I think I've seen you on YouTube, so I, it, I'm really going on this. The only thing I'm worried about is, what if the district governor, or you know, maybe this, this is just so different, and they're, they're not in favor of this new way of doing so, kickoff. New way? No. I don't. Okay, so your district governor may not approve of you starting clubs. Is that the idea? I just want to get straight now. You're the, L, you're the LGM, right? So your job is to start the club, it's his job to take credit for it, correct? <laughs> See, I know, I was a district guy, I know all about that. Okay, so you were a little nervous about him not going along with this new idea of getting Kubo. Uh, trust me, I've done it many different ways, and when you come in and you do a show and you just pick uh, Toastmasters in the audience to do the table topics, they're watching the show and they're, they're intimidated. Yeah. I, I could never do that, they think, and they walk away going, no, it's not for me. No. I don't let anyone, any Toastmaster speak, except, you know, we're doing the speech. We get them involved. Does that make sense? Does that help? Yeah. Okay. Yes? I'm in District 47. All right, 47. I'm sure you smile because that's your Dude. district. That's right. Uh, I have a very interesting dynamic because my district it involves two countries, and there are many districts in the room that involve more than one country. However, my district has, 80% of the district involves a country I don't live in, the United States. Yes. And I'm sure there are different policies and governance in relation to how clubs can be open in the United States versus the Bahamas. Does that mean that I need to establish a club expansion chair that basically has experience here so that they can pick up ground I can like fall short? And would it be the same thing for anyone in the room that may have multiple countries? They should have an expansion chair in each you should do the next seminar. That's fantastic. Absolutely. Now, what he's talking about is an extension chair. Here's what I want you to get. You're the LGMs. You need to be able to do this and have told certainty you can do it. You should go out and start a few clubs and bring anyone who's going to be helping you extension chairs to see how it's done, help you with it. Because if you can't do it, you're never going to get anyone else to do it. But if you can do it, boy, you can teach them, you can help them, you can go with them a little bit, and then they walk away with it. Now, at, when I was at District 47, we were all in South Florida and the Bahamas. I was on the West Coast, but we had the whole East Coast and the Bahamas. So we had three sections. We just happened to have a trio member in each. And each one of the trio members sort of took care of their section of the district. So I took care of anything on the West Coast. Uh, Christina Kilberg was uh, just above me as uh, LGET or, or district governor. 
and she took care of the East Coast, and then uh, Pamela Roll was in the Bahamas. And when we actually got a call, we personally would go and make, make that call and make the, uh, the meeting, create that uh, meeting for the kickoff meeting. We wouldn't give it to anybody else, we'd make sure it was set. And we'd make sure either we went or we got someone that we trusted to do the kickoff meeting. And we do it within 24 hours. Does that make sense? Good. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. In the three, in the three years that you chartered 108 clubs, how large a team did you have for each of those years? Um, two or three people, maybe. Uh, for the meetings, and we had, depending where we were, they would have a group there, but you don't need a lot of people, and uh, you're going to be pretty spread out, so you need to create groups of, of teams that can go out and do that. Make sense? And if nothing else, you can just show them the video. I'm going to send this to everybody. All you have to do is leave your card here, and whoever's card is on the table, when, yeah, at the end. This is, not the, this is not the close. You're, you're all charter members, trust me. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> One hour. One hour fifteen. It half five. Well, it might be it might be fifteen or ten, depending how quickly, how many people, and so forth. Let's say we have a group of twenty. We uh, we usually have a half hour. If there's a lot of people, maybe we just five minute, five to eight minutes to get started, and then maybe have the kick up a little bit longer. And uh, it doesn't take long to fill up the paperwork. If you do the close quick, you don't need 15 minutes. You can do so you could stretch the whole meeting to maybe 40 minutes and 10 on each end, depending on the group. Yeah, but the idea is you want to get them winning. And then they can always take the paperwork back and whatever. But make it. Yes, back there. What do you do if you have a situation where one of the people starts talking and talking and talking and talking? And how do you... If you've got a microphone, you walk over and go... Right on their head. <laughs> uh, you know, actually, uh, that's a good question. And I guess that'll be the time to hold up the card and say, I want to tell everyone about the red card. <laughs> <laughs> Just get creative. Have fun with it. You know, the less serious you take this thing, the more fun you're going to have, the easier it is. It'll work. When you're serious, nothing works. Lighten up. Have fun. Have fun with it. Be insouciant with that word. I'm scared with. <laughs> yes. I was going to ask, what, what do you do when you've been said that there are going to be 25 people and you come and suddenly you only have five? <coughs> only have five. That's a tough one. Yeah. Good question. I kind of call ahead of time and see how it's oh. doing, and they should kind of have a pulse. I know. I know. It's happened. And we still do the kickoff meeting. But I hate to come back a second time and a third time. You have one shot to really create that effect. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't think that's ever happened. Yes. When, you know, they usually they've got it set up. Sometimes they have a few less, but we did one last week. Last week we did it at Amex. Where's our L? Where's Tom? Over there. Tom, right back there. Okay, Tom is our, our L, LGM. We did one at Amex, and we had a weird situation where they had the open staircase and a little landing, and then stairway down. You could look mm -hmm. into all the covers, all over four floors, and they had no meeting room, so we had to do it on the landing by the stairs with no chairs for an hour. Wow. And we put people sitting on both sides of the stairs, so people, and people walking down while we were giving the presentation. <laughs> and they were standing, there were two tables with two chairs, like, like at a bar, you know, on each side, and that was it. So we, we had them all there, we were standing here facing, and we started the club, right, Tom? They sent in their paperwork Friday. Perfect, all right. Good. Okay, well, I, all right, uh, before you leave, uh, leave your card here, and if you want to write down my email address, it's my first and last name together, Rick Furbush, it's spelled R-I-C-K-F-U-R-B-U-S-H, at Mac, M-A-C, dot com. <clears throat> and if you leave uh, your card here, I'll make sure I send this to you and use this when you, when you get your team together, show them this, maybe that'll help. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, thank you very much. I'll turn it back over to you. Rick, I've got, I've got a new name for you. Okay. Tricky Ricky. <laughs> I'm telling you, that closing and the whole way you look at the top 10 tips to get rid of your terror of speaking 
and how our demo meetings can really almost be contradictive to what we want to accomplish.